Don't you wave at me. He's like a, a what cryogenic man or whatever with cables hanging out his face there. Okay, we looked at our our maps. We don't know nothing. They're not helpful at all. Because it doesn't show that this road's closed. He said that there's a... Oh, if you're familiar up here, they're doing like a wildlife crossing thing. He said that that's kind of that way. So this might be shut off because these might be the roads that they're working off of. So anyway... Apparently, uh, oh, I think I finished the dad's story. It's a family uh, condition that we all, or that dad falls over when he's dang near stopped. I also fell over when I was pulling in. I wasn't, wasn't out, stopped all the way, but that gravel got me. I hurt myself today. When I was going super slow. Thank goodness I was going super slow though. I still skinned up my knee. And uh. I don't know what that's from. Anyway I still skinned up my knee. And what's he doing back there? Huh. I wonder if I should wait on him or just go. Y'all see the pretty lake? I should probably leave him. Here he comes. There he goes. I can see his back armor in his jacket there. You see that square thing? So, see, I get so distracted. I blame him. I think he's the one that distracts me most of the time, actually. So, I was going to tell you guys about our, my wreck some more. Because when I did it afterwards, we were still going to Mount Rainier and you know, it takes a minute to process. That's the excuse I'll use anyway. So I was pulling in there. Actually, I was pulling in there to zip up. This coat has like zippers in the sleeves here and everywhere. Where you can open them up to get air. So I still had this zipper open and my back zipper open. Actually, the whole back of this jacket folds in and turns into mesh. So I was like, okay, I'm getting cold. So I had signaled for a little bit and so he could hopefully see me. And pull over. So of all places to pull over, that's where he decides to pull over. And you know, it like this stuff, it's like a little pea gravel with oil and whatever, some sort of mix in it. And that's what that was actually. So a lot of times that stuff actually packs down pretty decent. Well, that wasn't packed down pretty decent. <laughs> I went in it and my front tire went sideways to the right and pulled my handlebars to the right. And I couldn't get... Well, actually, I think I may have got stopped. I know I put my foot down. But all that did was slide because the gravel was so thick. I couldn't fight with it to stay up. And I fell over. And it was not pleasant. And it hurt. And you know what happened? He was up there. I'm, I'm laying there. My poor sit turn signal's on beeping. Because the, apparently the grump's probably uh, calling for help too. What's that noise? Is that this? The Grum is prob is calling for help too. And my back tire is still sitting there slowly spinning because it's still in first gear. And the thing's still running. So, excuse me. I'm laying there, rolling around like a beached whale. And what does he do? He looks at me, and first he says something like, uh, Oh, honey. And he starts walking towards me. And then he says, oh wait, I got to record this. And he goes back, and he goes back to the truck, or not the truck, he goes back to his bike and gets a camera so he can record me. Laying on the ground, flopping around like a freaking fish out of water. Don't pull out there. <laughs> and then he comes over and he's making fun of me and I'm there assessing my injuries trying to figure out if my knee will survive or if I'm going to be able to walk or if I'm going to have to throw a bigger fit. So I didn't have to throw too big of a fit. But as he walks over, he says, you need to turn your bike off. It's going to, it's going to mess it up if you don't turn it off. It's not good for it to sit there and run. I said, fuck you, I'm doing it. You do it. <laughs> so 
so he la he laughs at me. You believe that? He laughs at me and he comes over and he turns it off. And then he starts giving me this adult lecture about how if you right crash your bike, you have to turn it off because the engine sitting there running and the wheel spinning will will cause damage and blah blah. I was worried about my knee damage. I didn't care about that engine damage. I'll just tell it how it is. And then <coughs> he gave me a few minutes. I'll, I'll give him that. He gave me a few minutes as I'm laying there. And he recorded me some more and made a gif because he th he thinks he's freaking hilarious. <coughs> and then he said, are you going to pick up your bike? I said, no, I ain't picking up my bike. I'm laying on the ground. He said, well, I got some wisteria. He said, well, you need to pick up your bike. I ain't picking it up. I was trying to lay there and waller in my self-pity, right? Okay, that's it. Waller in my self-pity. I ain't picking up the freaking bike. My knee skin up. It hurts. My ego's bruised. Leave me alone. At least let me see if I can walk before you try and make me pick up my dang bike. So, he picked it up for me. He wasn't happy about it. And then later I got another lecture about how uh, if you're riding a motorcycle, you need to be able to pick it up. And blah, 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 blah. Y'all, this bike weighs 200 pounds. I'm pretty sure I can get this bike back in an upright position and flick the kickstand down and make it stay. However, when I'm on the ground, wallering in my, my knee pain and self-pity, I am not going to jump up and move my bike. If y'all saw that, it wasn't like actually in, in the road. It was in a little pull-off. Now, granted, somebody could have still ran it over, but they would have also ran me over. And at the time, I didn't care because my knee hurt. He just thinks he's hilarious, though. I got to pick up the bike. By the way, I'm currently accepting sympathy cards and gifts of encouragement along with shoulder and foot rubs for my uh, horrendous injuries from the bike accident. You can send them to me. Here comes the boy. Okay, guys. What was that? I also was like, you know, when I'm in the truck and not on the bike, I think about all sorts of stuff to talk about. All so oh, my chin's cold. All sorts of topics. All sorts of stories to tell. And everything else, because I'm in the truck drinking coffee, getting all caffeinated up, driving down the road in a semi, right? But then when I get out here, I get so distracted by all of this that I don't even remember what I was going to talk to you guys about. Don't even remember. <coughs> now, I know some of you guys really like my grandma stories. So I do have a good grandma story. I think I tried to tell this once before, but my cameraman up there, who I am seriously thinking about replacing, just an FYI, Mr. Cameraman, as you edit, my cameraman up there, I don't know, something was wrong with the GoPro, so uh, it didn't record the audio. Grandma was, she was a little short woman, maybe 5'3 or something. And at one point in her life, before she went on her cholesterol diet, she was literally as round as she was tall. Now, I lived with Grandma and Grandpa for years, so that's why I have so many Grandma and Grandpa stories. And this was later when in I was a... Actually, I think I was had my very first job. And I was getting ready to go to work. And Grandma says... I was getting ready to go to work and grandma comes in and grandpa had Alzheimer's so she would pull up to the front door in the yard instead of parking in the driveway to help him in and bring groceries in and all that stuff so she came home with her her grocery haul right and I'm like okay uh, I helped get grandpa in and carried a bag or two of groceries in and I went back to getting ready for work and she was putting groceries up now, mind you, this is the grandma that had my little bastard dad. <laughs> she had a jar of cherries. Those maraschino, like, sugar, heavy syrup, candied cherry type things, you know. She said, Tammy, 
Do you want a cherry? As she was eating one, I said, no, oh, Grandma, I don't, I don't want a cherry. I'm getting ready some more, and I walk back through the living room again because, you know, that's what girls do is walk around while they're getting ready. And she said, Tammy, are you, you want a cherry, honey? I said, no, Grandma, I don't want no cherry. They're too sugary for me. And I was almost finished getting ready, and she says, Honey, are you sure you don't want a cherry? They're awful good. And I said, no, Grandma. I said, I don't want no damn cherry. I don't like them. They're too sugary. I don't want one ever. And she looked at me so serious. Because you know grandmas have those serious looks, right? So serious. And she says, Tammy, this is probably the only cherry you're ever going to have again. Now, insert long dramatic pause here. Because I was giving her the look. And she was giving me the look. And I said, Grandma, how do you know I still ain't got my cherry? She don't know. Whatever, right? How do you know I still ain't got my cherry? Now, this little five foot nothing tall woman put her hand on her little round, what well, would have been hip, but her little round torso. And look. I'm sure she had to muster up all of her uh, inner, inner, uh, what is that called? Stamina or whatever to not smirk. And she says, Tammy, your cherry is probably pushed so far back in you, you could use it for a tail light. <laughs> OMG. We looked at each other for, for probably 10 seconds at least. Because, y'all, that's, fun that's funny, right? looked at each other and I finally busted out laughing she busted out laughing oh my oh that smells good never heard it before she said what do you mean I told you that was good that was good I said I never heard that before she said what do you mean you never heard that before that's old as the hills honey well I ain't old as the hills using your cherry for a tail light some people around town and whatnot would always tell me how sweet and innocent and wonderful my grandma was and she was all the sweet and wonderful part they got that right but the innocent part oh no if you thought she was a sweet little innocent lady you did not know her i think people thought that because she if there was like little kids at the store or whatever she would buy them candy now they did not have a white van. They did have a green van at one point, but you know. And then we had the milk cow and we would take milk and cream to the, I say old neighbors. I mean, they were my grandparents. They were older, but there were still people. They were still milking cows and raising chickens and stuff. So, and it was just them two and me. Look at that old car. So they would end up taking milk and cream and eggs and whatever else to the older people that weren't in as good as health or couldn't get out or just didn't have a whole lot of money or whatever so grandma and grandpa would end up taking them produce from the farm so i think it, everybody thought that they were sweet and nice which i mean they were it was good of them to do that because they didn't have to but they somehow they threw in innocent and all these these other things in there which cracks me up but innocent I guess maybe in her older years, she uh, portrayed herself as more innocent. But if you knew her, innocent was not it. She had some of the best wild and crazy stories. I had to leave my helmet crack for a minute. Every, in town, at least, every time we stop, I start fogging up. Love draft. Drink craft. Crafted. There's a beer store. I wonder if it's a restaurant too. Artisan pizza. I don't want that. This is like a little uh, trendy town, isn't it? I like them flowers. Little art store it looks like. I would say look at these people not wearing that many clothes. It's kind of cold. But then again, I'm on a motorcycle. So I guess that would be kind of silly of me to say that, wouldn't it?
Oh, there's the lake. There's a waterfall out there. Can you go? I don't know if you guys can see the waterfall. There it is. Public parking. Everywhere near these resort stuff is pay to park. Honk. That little corner tavern trendy part too. There's Quicksilver Studios if you were looking for it. Oh, look at the giant dandelions. That's a giant wish. Some see a weed. Some see a wish. Actually, I painted some rocks that said that. Oh, we might be going down to the boat docks. Over height, wind flashing, 7 8. What's down here? The good thing about motorbikes, you can just kind of zip around wherever. You can kind of turn around wherever. And if you get lost, it ain't too awful big of a deal. You can just zip around and get. I shouldn't say unlost, but you can go back the way you came from pretty doggone easy. Oh, apparently, we're stopping over here. Here's the boy that drives me crazy. What are you doing, Shuggy? 